Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the newest and last of the anniversary weapons, Tifas, and I was really excited about this weapon. I still am, however, I'm going to do this video a little bit different than normal because the way I see it, uh, there's maybe a few different groups of people when it comes to this banner. Uh, on one hand, you have a large group of people that are going to pull because it's Tifa no matter what. And they've been planning on doing that the entire time. Probably one of the reasons they released Tifa last is to try to, you know, see if people would pull on the other ones and then have to maybe spend in order to pull on this or get as much as they want. Okay, I, I assume that's a pretty good chunk. On the other hand, you've got people that um, maybe won't pull for Tifa because they don't play her, probably a pretty small, but also in that group might be the people that pulled on the first three and they just don't have very many crystals to pull on this. And maybe because of that, they won't pull or they'll pull, but they're not willing to spend. So they're only going to be able to clear, you know, maybe half a page to a page. But I think somewhere in the middle, there is a group of people that are on the fence. They're not really sure. And so that's where I'm aiming uh, to create this video around because I really just wanted to actually be helpful to people and help make a decision here on whether or not you should pull for this or if you've been waiting the entire time, which one of these should you pull on? I think that that is a good time to do this now. So first I'm gonna do my normal kind of, hey, this is what I think of the weapon, etc. cetera. Um, as far as the costume, I'm not a fan actually of this. Like there's some good elements to it and you know, whatever, but I think it kind of looks weird. Um, it seems like what they did with Cloud and Aerith worked, as, and this is kind of more in the vein of Cloud, but it worked for Cloud. I, I, it doesn't personally work for me, uh, for Tifa, which is a bit of a disappointment because, you know, I was really excited for that. Uh, what does it do, though? It's the best costume, maybe, of all of them, definitely as far as the, you know, DPS units go. Uh, this is the same as Cloud and Yuffie, so nothing different here. But Bahamut's Whisper is just better than what Cloud and Yuffie got. Because theirs is only 5% to the physical attack, whereas she gets 10%. Um, why they decided to make this better, I don't know. It, it could be because Aerith didn't really have this, and so they're kind of balancing it out. It could be because her weapon is a little bit more awkward in certain ways, which we're going to talk about. Um, but it is twice as good on this percentage here, 10 instead of five. I do think if you use Tifa, this is a great costume to get and would highly recommend going for it. Bahamut Fangs. So this is the weapon. And the first thing I want to do is look at the OB-1 card. So pulling up the card that Tom Rom made again for us, we can see that there is a pretty substantial boost from going to from five star to OB1. And the first most important thing that we notice is that you get an extra 120% magical non-elemental damage. That's a big deal, especially for just one extra copy of the weapon. As far as the R abilities, that's the normal boost that we always expect. Stats go up a pretty good amount too, actually. And I'm, I don't normally cover um, you know, the actual numbers in the stat category, which you see on the left. But I am going to on this one because I'm going to talk about how this weapon to me is a little bit of a letdown from OB OB6 to OB10. And so part of that's going to include stats. So you see you get 110 to magic attack and 80 to physical attack. That's a really good jump compared to what you get, let's say, from OB6 to OB10. Other than that, the haste duration is the same. Um, the crit rate, all that stuff is the same. You do get a little bit more of, you know, an extension on the time. So 20 seconds versus 15 on the magic up. Um, but other than that, mostly you'd be going for this, I think, for that extra 120% magical non-elemental damage. Uh, and to a lesser extent, you know, 110 more on the magic attack stat. So for that reason, I do think if you're going to pick up a copy, it's, it's definitely worth getting OB-1. And realistically... I think if I was going to go for this, OB6 is pretty big, but OB10, not so much. So if we look at this weapon at OB6, you can see here 1000% magical non-elemental damage, which is pretty damn good. 
A lot of similar weapons cap out around 900%. Also, you get the haste just like Cloud. Uh, 25 second duration at OB6 is quite good as well. And then magic attack increase. And the difference when you get to OB6 is that it stacks to high. I think a main uh, downside of this weapon is this mid potency not being um, not being able to get to high on a single cast. And the reason for that is with only a 20 second duration and a, only a seven second extension, by the time you've probably saved up enough for eight ATB to cast this twice, you're not gonna have the high potency magic attack for very long. And, and that kind of sucks. And even when you take it to OB10, it doesn't get a whole lot better. I mean, you get an extra one second on the extension and five seconds on the initial cast. So, I mean, assuming you attack with this weapon a lot, that might not be a big thing because you'll be, you know, constantly adding, you know, re-adding it or reapplying it. However, it, it just doesn't feel that good uh, to me because you don't have a lot of scenarios where a DPS is trying to do an AOE buff like this. And part of the problem is that you don't want to be equipping Tifa with, I mean, if you're going to equip this most of the time, you're, you're building her as a DPS. And so you're not equipping buff debuff extension. And if you compare this to like Kamurawan with Aerith, not only at OB6 do you get high potency magic attack, high potency magic defense, but that innately has a buff debuff. And usually a lot of the other heal type weapons or utility weapons you're going to be putting on a character like Aerith also have buff debuff extension. So it's very easy to get this to be two times, maybe even three times the duration because you can't do that. I mean, you're probably not building Tifa that way, at least not at the moment with what we have. This this buff, like I said, getting it to high potency is not going to be that easy. And for that reason, I, I don't think it's bad to have this, but the fact that it doesn't start out as high, I think is a real bummer. And also, like I said, I would rather see something else like what Cloud got with his AOE flat damage, something that just really signifies, you know, this is a DPS thing. I, I feel like this puts it in a little bit of a weird category. It's my personal opinion. The other thing that kind of sucks is from OB6 to OB10, if you check this number right here, you get 100% more. A 10% increase in the C ability damage for four more copies of the weapon. That doesn't feel that great. Especially too, you're only getting six more to the boost magic attack all. You are getting 12 more though for the boost magic ability potency, which is a pretty decent amount. <laughs> the haste goes up by five seconds. Um, and then this number here, the 640 goes up to 698. Now 698 is a huge number. As far as weapons go, for the main attack stat, 698 is huge. I mean, a lot of weapons are only going up to like 670 or so, but you know, still you're only getting another 58 for four more copies of the weapon on this magic attack stat. So all in all, I can say this is one of the few uh, limit break weapons that I really don't think is necessary to take to OB10. Now, when I do my pulls and yes, I'm going to be pulling for this, OB6 is going to be the goal. The only way I would probably really want to take it to OB10 is if by the time I finish two pages, I have at least eight copies of the weapon. Other than that, I don't think that I'm willing to put anything more into this to try to get it to OB10. At least that's that's what my, my logical brain is telling me now. So for those reasons, I do think that although this weapon is good and it would be amazing for a sub weapon, um, I don't know that it's quite up there with what we really want for Tifa being the last weapon on the anniversary. The other problem with this is when you're equipping somebody like Tifa, and one of the things that I, I think is important to look at, um, if we go in and look at, for example, uh, bunny gloves, right? Water potency, great, okay? This is a great weapon. But what really, really enables her to hit really hard with this is also equipping something like feathered gloves and i almost think it's maybe not a must-have but in certain circumstances it feels that way 
because not only are you getting more water potency, which if you're doing water damage or any elemental damage, if there's a weapon like this, you're going to want that. But also you need to have it in the second hand if you want to get something like this, which is increasing your own water damage. So for that reason, I also dislike this weapon a little bit more. Now, when it comes to fire or lightning, she doesn't have anything like this. But we've seen with Glenn, his water uh, with Slay the Day, he also has the boost. I imagine there's going to be more weapons in the future where you equip them as your sub weapon or however you want to do it, but you need the C ability to buff yourself so you can do max damage. So when we're thinking about this weapon here, you know, this honestly like needs to take a slot if you want all this stuff, right? If you want to be able to do the magic attack increase, if you want to give yourself haste, which is huge. It, it's great for magic non-elemental damage, that kind of build. It would be great as a sub weapon just to add for any magical damage build. But you're missing out on all this if you don't equip it in one of your two main slots. And I worry that more and more of the elemental damage builds are going to require a second elemental weapon like the one we saw with feathered gloves in that slot. So. That's why I'd rather see those types of weapons that give those those party wide buffs on a utility character. And yes, you can run Tifa as like a hybrid with this. But I don't think that's what a lot of people want to do with her. And I don't think that's what we were hoping out of this weapon. Now, with that in mind, I will compare it to the rest of her weapons just to show how great it is. And again, if you're familiar with any of these anniversary uh, banner reviews, You'll know this chart should seem pretty familiar. We've got the Bahamut Fangs in purple here. If you look at this, you know, you can easily compare it to every other weapon. And looking at the OB10 column, you can see Guide Gloves is the highest percentage she has at 1300%. Shell Knuckles is the second highest, and that's a 940% base, but it has a multiplier, so it can go up to 1128%. And then you have Bahamut Fangs at 1100%. So by far, it's her strongest uh, magical non-elemental damage weapon. It is her second highest overall uh, C ability percentage weapon in, as far as damage goes. Obviously, we've talked in previous videos that, you know, boost magic ability potency and boost magic attack all are very good. And this is the first weapon that she's got that has those types of R abilities. It's got a sigil boost. Everything is great. Um, it, it does line up well against her other weapons, okay? Especially because Tifa's become more and more of a magic damage dealer. So something like this is actually a perfect secondary weapon if you're just not, if you don't have another elemental weapon for the, even the elemental builds, this can be stuck in there to make her hit a lot harder. Now, because I told everybody at the beginning of this that I wanted this to be, um, you know, as useful as possible for people on the fence, I think this is the perfect video to do the comparison uh, between all of these weapons. And I'm not really going to compare the costumes because I think that the costumes are all good. And even though Tifa's is the strongest of the DPS ones, I wouldn't make that probably the only decision maker, right? I would really be looking at the weapons to decide what I'm going to pull for if I was limited and how hard I was going to go. So here's another chart that Tom Rom made uh, to make this a little bit easier to follow. Uh, looking at all of the weapons, right, Tifa, Cloud, Aerith, and Yuffie, we can kind of separate these really easily by saying that Aerith is the only real, like, straight-up utility healer type weapon. The other ones all have some utility, but then they're also geared towards DPS. And I think that the overall DPS king of these, honestly, is Clouds. I can tell you from testing that the fact that it's AoE... 800% uh, at OB10 is pretty big, especially for a weapon that hits all and gives a flat damage modifier at the end. Um, right now, mine is still hitting on the OB6 level. But 670% when you add 30k to that is a big deal. It is very, very useful for clearing out um, add-ons as well. And for that reason, I believe that if you're a new player or if you're you know, your account is still like, I need to just build the most power I can the fastest. I think Clouds is probably going to have the biggest difference in your account the quickest, if that makes sense. 
So I guess I'd say for new players or players, you know, even that have been playing for four or five months, maybe, I think Clouds is a pretty great choice for number one priority. I think Aerith's is the only one that gives him a real run for his money, but it's hard to compare them because they're completely different in how they operate. Um, Clouds obviously gives him haste, which is great. It gives the AOE and it does pretty damn good damage in general. Uh, Aerith's, you know, is Aerith's provides the AOE heal. And it does that while simultaneously being able to give ATB to your other two allies. And although it's only one, I've also been able to start testing that since the last uh, pulls that I did. And it really feels good. Uh, there is a lot of times where, you, you know, enemies hit you with a big shot that takes maybe 50% of your HP. A lot of times you get one, if not two of those heals in a row where they're giving the ATB, provided you have it at OB6 or better. It becomes a big deal. The Asuna All slot was the thing I was most impressed by with this, and I've been able to use it, but not, I haven't been able to really truly take advantage of it in tough situations yet. I know that will come depending on the content that I'm doing. And so I think that those two are the top tier. If I was going to pull on two of these banners and two only, those would be the two I would be going for. And, you know, which one you actually prioritize, probably more veterans would want to prioritize Aerith, in my opinion. Um, and then Cloud would be secondary. For Yuffie, the problem with Yuffie is that not as many people run her in their main lineup. And, I, and I'm saying main as in top four characters, right? You have your, your three main that you normally use, and then you have like one, maybe even two or three characters you swap in and out. And if it's not Earth, I don't know that a lot of people are going to Yuffie. And that's not a dig on anybody. I'm just saying that for most people, I think she kind of comes in last because... She's just not quite as good as the other three in general. And so building her is not something I would recommend unless you already have all these other people very strong for your teams. So Tifa to me comes in third. Uh, I think her ability is pretty good, but I don't see it like clouds. It's easier based on what he's got right now to always have this equipped. Um, the fact that it also clears AOE is just like a bonus. So you don't, you're getting more out of putting that in one of your two main slots. Um, Aerith's is just really good because it gives her access to AOE physical defense up, which is not something and she had access to it, but not in a way that's meta anymore. So I think that is very, very good. Uh, also, it feels nice to have a magic attack all on uh, your main healer because normally you want to put that in like a sub weapon slot but it feels hard when you're trying to maybe max out her heal stat or something like that um so tifa ultimately was the one i was most excited about and i'll be honest i think it's like third best i really do and if you're not somebody who's just like yeah i'm pulling on tifa anyway uh, or you know you have a lot of resources sure those people go for it i'm going to be going for it but I can tell you, it's um, out of Cloud and Aerith, I would want both of those at OB10 if I could. In fact, I'm going to get Clouds to OB10 as soon as I get four more weapon parts for him. Aerith's, I don't think I'll get there, maybe ever, but I would love to have it. Tifa's, I could, I'd be very happy to get it at OB6. So that is, I, I hope, something that if you're on the fence, um, like I said, if you have the resources and you've already gotten what you wanted out of the other Limit Break banners, I think it's fine to go for. I personally probably wouldn't really want it. I mean, a copy or two. Otherwise, OB6. I think it needs to be because you do get a huge advantage in the amount of damage it does. And if you're not getting that, you probably don't want to have to use that C ability that often because I just don't think it's it's good enough to warn it without also being able to do a decent amount of damage. The last thing I want to talk about because it is uh, new with this banner is... The new Kate Sith weapon. Um, now, the way that they're doing these uh, Mako gem exchanges is a little bit weird uh, because at first, you know, we were getting uh, the ones for Genji Blade with everything. The first three banners all had Sephiroth's shards and you can see here I'm 10 away from being able to just pick it up. I have not been able to pull it. Um, but the way that they're doing it now is you get these either or shards and then later you exchange them for whatever you want to use them for. Um, so you would need 300 to pull for Kate's, you know, etc. But you could, let's say I got 
310, I could use my first 10, let's say, to get the Genji Blade. So looking at Kate Sith's weapon, I'm torn. Um, I was really hoping that it would have an AoE heal. I know that that wouldn't be as good as having access to it as many times as you wanted, but with assuming it would have about two charges, man, he really just needs this, I feel like, uh, to be the perfect uh, character, honestly. But they're still, they're still keeping it from him. Um, why I have kind of mixed feelings on this is like, his UC ability does damage and haste. Haste is great. A thousand percent damage, I don't know. Um, I think this would be great if he had the same R ability that Sephiroth has, right? So Sephiroth's is a damage increase while you're in a sigil break phase. This one though, as soon as the sigil break comes, all allies get plus two ATB, which is great for utility. I think that's amazing. I think the buff debuff is amazing when you're using him for utility, which is kind of what I like to do. But I wish this kind of was something different, like a heal. Then, then this would be this would be clutch. I would be so happy with that. Um, because again, if he had what Sephiroth has, and if we just go back real quickly and look, right, he has interruption mastery. And so he gets an extra 60% ability potency when you're in the sigil break phase, like once you've broken it. If you had something like that on Kate, and then could hit with, you know, the yellow megaphone or something, like you could really, really take advantage of that uh, and deal some pretty broken damage. As it stands though, this is just straight up utility, which is great because everybody can get off more hits maybe, uh, while you're in that phase, which is always a good time to pile on damage anyway, or get your heals in, whatever you need. So I think that this is a great weapon, especially because it doesn't take up a slot. Um, you know, it is. It's very solid. But this here just does not seem uh, to jive for me with the rest of it. That's my kind of critique on that. So to me, I think, it's, I think both of these uh, ultimate weapons are really good. And I wanted to cover it just because that just dropped with this banner. So I do think it's kind of part of the banner. That's everything I have. I hope you found this helpful. I'm really curious to know what everybody else thinks. Uh, I always get people that both agree and heavily disagree with me in the comments. And I love reading those because usually I learn something or consider something I hadn't thought of before. Other than that, subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, Thanks for watching.